welcome to today's edition of CARICOM One on One. I'm your host, Jasmine Dunkley Malcolm. Thank you for joining us. Today we're going to be talking security and, you know, crime and violence are two matters that are of significant concern to us in the region. And so I'm going to be talking to a representative from the CARICOM Secretariat about the issue. But before we get there, if you are not a member of the CARICOM YouTube family, please subscribe to our channel. And if you want to know when we upload, then feel free to hit the bell notification button. Now, as I was saying, crime and violence are two issues that are of major concern for us in the region and so my guest today is the program manager for crime and security at the CARICOM Secretariat, Mr. Sherwin Toyne Stevenson. <laughs> Thank you for being on the program Sherwin. Thank you for inviting me, it's a pleasure to be here. Now I know that earlier in April there was a meeting of the CONSLE yes. which dealt with matters of crime and security yes. of course mm -hmm. and so because of that that and of course because of how important those issues are to the region and how much of a concern it has become especially recently I thought it would be good for us to have a little chat about crime and security across CARICOM right Certainly. but before we get into crime and security I, I know I mentioned CONSLE and I'm pretty sure that most people <laughs> might not be familiar with what that acronym means what is CONSLE? Well CONSLE really stands for the Council of Ministers of National Security and Law Enforcement. And it's the body that reports to heads of government on matters, policy matters, and implementation matters relating to crime and security in the region. Okay, and by heads of government, you do mean the CARICOM heads, CARICOM of, heads government, of government, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. So that group pretty much advises them about security matters. Yes. So talk to me now, Sherwin, about what some of the topics were that you guys discussed in the council meeting. Well, the, the meeting looked at some general administrative matters as related to the implementation of security in the region, or just what we call the framework for crime and security, mm -hmm. um, because you know, council has been in existence for quite a number of years, um, and we've had ministers come in and out, so we thought it was a good time for ministers to review the framework, um, look and see if it still meets the needs of the region, mm -hmm. and uh, make any recommendations for any improvements that they think. Um, two other major areas that they were able to look at were um, the importance of gathering empirical data to assist in the development of crime and security policies mm -hmm. in the region. And um, they were also able to look, you know, extensively at um, how we move through the region. We, we touched a bit on the CSME, and we looked at a lot of the legal, in what we call the legal instruments, um, mm -hmm. that's, which are the legislative sort of types of um, arrangements that support um, crime and security matters throughout the region. Okay. Now, what were some of the outcomes from those discussions? Well, well, thankfully, the ministers agreed that the, the framework itself was relevant, still relevant, so that, that in itself shows the robustness of how it was um, developed in the first place. We also were able to approve the, a protocol, a shared protocol for gathering data on persons who would have returned from other countries. We call them deportees eh, or um, mm -hmm. returning migrants to, to the nation. Right. Um, with respect to the legal instruments, we were able to look and, and advise on the, the feasibility what are these legal instruments doing first? And in two in particular that you know we could highlight is something called APIS, mm -hmm. which really in, is a, in a successful um, intelligence network with, with our partners that really looks at those issues surrounding safe travel right. and ensuring that persons can travel within the region freely. And yeah. safely. And safely, yes. Ah, okay. <laughs> all right. So for the lay person who's just watching the program, they're hearing all of these technical terms. Can you break it down for Certainly. me to say, like, how does this or do these outcomes affect the man on the street? Okay. Well, for the legal instruments, um, we look at what we call harmonization. Um, each nationality would really have specific problems related to crime and security within their own confines, but there are some issues that are best tackled regionally. Right. And so when we look at transnational organized crime, mm -hmm. um, that is one of the areas where our nationals would benefit from constantly because we're able to look at what prescriptions work for the region, um, you know, fight against um, these organizations and um, what are some of the determinants in helping us as citizens move 
freely through the region with you know with like you s had mentioned earlier in terms of how safe is travel right yes um, with respect to the data gathering mm -hmm. um, we've been doing quite a lot of work actually um, in what we call the determinants of crime right um, and we've been implementing something called the uh, Program estimates. Okay, before you go to mm -hmm. that, what exactly is determinants of crime? Ah, well, determinants of crime really looks at what causes persons to become involved in crime in the first place. And it's easiest to best understand when you look at um, vulnerabilities okay. and resiliencies. I see. So, you know, sometimes in a neighborhood, people would consider to be a rough neighborhood. There's mm -hmm. still persons who emerge that are unaffected by the character of the community that they come from. Right. And so we say that those persons have resilience towards whatever is taking place and mm -hmm. generally we found um, that things that contribute to persons um, remaining on a natural development path or going through school successfully has to do with the ties that they have with their family mm -hmm. the ties they have with the community and churches um, how they operate in schools and of course how well they're able to absorb that kind of information right and of course the community that you come from is not necessarily determinant of no. you becoming a no. criminal because There's you have a lot of yeah mm. come from affluent communities who are also yeah. turning to life so it's crime. not just where you come from but a whole lot of factors that impinge on your eventual choice to get into you know risk taking behavior we call it at first okay so uh, back to your original point um my original point that had to do determinants of crime and right. where we got to um really actually the focus of this one is on um addressing violence in the region in particular domestic mm -hmm. violence right and um looking at addressing resiliencies particularly within primary and secondary schools okay. um so we kind of we would be able to do a survey and look at what are some of the challenges that our young people in particular would have in schools and um, we can to work with the parents and the teachers and the community um, to ensure that whatever challenges there are could be overcome so that that child has a better chance of having a smoother transition into adulthood. Okay. Talk to me now about the general general work that is being done by CARICOM. And I know Consley would have a significant mm -hmm. influence on that, but I'm sure there are other initiatives that the CARICOM Secretariat and the region in general mm -hmm. have been implementing to address this issue crime especially criminal activity violence mm -hmm. it's clearly a significant problem for us in the mm -hmm. region what are some of the measures that are being put in place to address the concerns well, one of the key um, services that we provide to the region really has to do with helping them develop um, strategic approaches and, and developing templates for member states to use um, to assist them with their fight against crime. Um, so we have four instruments that I just want to mention. We have the CARICOM Crime and Security Strategy, mm -hmm. which outlines carefully um, what are the threats, some of the risks within our regions, and what are some of the prescriptions to deal with those at a regional level. Right. And of course, we ask member states to incorporate these into their national plans. Right. So it's not just driven from here, but it becomes a, a, a living you know, document. It becomes enshrined within the member states itself. We've recently also completed our um, counter-terrorism strategy. It's at the strategic level. Mm -hmm. It's identified in four pillars, and of course we're going to be rolling that out soon. Um, we've also had um, further implementation of what we call our social development and crime prevention action plan. Uh -huh. um, which Really, I like, remember we were discussing determinants of crime a little bit earlier. Mm -hmm. So this would address right. some so of it, those determinants. Right, it, it, it um, structures those determinants and some of the prescriptions into some thematic areas. Right. Um, resilience, um, schools, gangs, and it looks at a whole lot of um, best practices and approaches that the region can use to begin to you know, offset some of these um, challenges that they might have within the region. Or to yeah. continue. Or to, and continue, yes. <laughs> what we, is the fourth thing? Um, we we'll look at some of the, what is an emerging issue, crimes of the environment. Oh, mm -hmm. okay. Could you explain what that means? Crimes of the environment really, if you take it literally, has to do with anything that harms the natural environment. Um, you know that on a broader basis we talk about sustainability. Um, and the reason that crime and violence um, strategies are being put into place is not a means and an end to itself, but to ensure um, safe and economic de development for the rest of the region. So any members or, or groups within society that do harmful things to the environment, um, be it 
poaching birds, um, rare birds that they're not supposed mm -hmm. to be poaching, um, engaging in practices that could engage or cause land degradation that would okay. affect the livelihood of communities, all those issues are okay. um, considered okay. underneath. Um, legal fishing. Uh, right, all those issues, okay. yes. Thank you so much, Sherwin. Now, if, you know, members of our audience wanted to find out where they can get more information about, you know, what is being done by CARICOM, the CARICOM Secretariat, about crime and security across the region, where can they find that information? Well, thank you, Justine, for that question. A lot of the information that I spoke about is easily available on our websites. Um, so that's the actual CARICOM Secretariat website and mm -hmm. on our Implementing Agency for Crime, Impacts. Mm -hmm. um, so they can access both of those websites and get a lot of the documents and information that we spoke about just now. Okay, thank you so much. And that's as much time as we have for today's program. Now, Sherwin just spoke about our website. You can find our website at www.caricom.org. You may also follow us on social media like us on facebook follow us on twitter check out our blog today.caricom.org once again thank you so much for joining us for today's program it's been a pleasure having you see you next time